Hi guys, this is Chantal and today I'm going to be showing you how I single stem my tomato plants. So as you can see, I'm standing right now by my tomato bed. They aren't doing the best. I'm not sure what's going on with them. Uh, their leaves are curling, but I'm not going to jump into the conclusion that they have leaf curl disease. Uh, we have been having some really weird, weird weather for this time of the year. We are having cold nights and um, today is a really nice day but it's also windy. I hope you uh, are not hearing a lot of wind. And it has been pretty windy for this uh, whole spring season and pretty cold. So, and super rainy as well. So I'm thinking those could be some of the factors that are causing this leaf curl and then when we do have some warm days it's really hot days so we we also had a heat wave uh, earlier in the spring and I planted these tomato tomatoes super early I did a video on that I'll, I'll leave a link for it uh, at the end of this video if you guys want to watch that and um, I'm not gonna give up on them <laughs> I am going to prune them they are desperate for pruning and for staking and all that uh, I've been so busy lately now is the time to work on them. I should have came here a lot earlier and worked on them, but I had so many things going on uh, that I had to work on. And you know, I'm only one person here, so I can't, <laughs> I can't be in all the places at one time. So I only have a limited amount of time that I can work in the garden each day. So today is tomato turn, and if it's not raining. You know, if, if it is raining sometimes, I do, en I do end up going outside if it's not like pouring rain, if it's, if it's drizzling, but um, it looks like it's going to rain today, so I better hurry up and start on this. Another reason that I think could be causing the leaf curl is probably aphids. I'm not sure. I didn't see any aphids. I saw what looks like aphid scales, but these tomatoes were affected by aphids before I planted them when I... Um, when they were still in their seedling trays and in their pots after I potted them up. Um, so that could be it. Yesterday I came along here and I sprayed the entire garden with Bt because everything is infested with either aphids or thrips. What I thought was aphids on the uh, fava beans, it turns out it's thrips and thrip, thrips, I think that's how you say it. Uh, they're very similar. The aphids are more oval while thrips are more oblong and they're super black in color. Uh, so yeah, they plagued my fava beans as usual. And that's those are the ones that usually attack my fava beans. Sorry, I'm squinting. The glare in the atmosphere <laughs> is uh, it's hard to see. So maybe I should put on some, gla some sunglasses. Uh, so I sprayed them and I'll be uh, spraying either once or every once or every twice a week with just the um, pre as a preventative with BT. BT is basically a what's it called? Bacillus uh, bacillus three and three angus something some something like that. Um, it is a soil born bacteria. It's or it's natural organic and it what it does it's a concentrate of that stuff so i just put it i have a hose attachment um a, a container that attaches to the hose and it has a spare end on it and i just uh, put the the uh, bt in there or anything that i want to spray on my garden um except for uh herbicides of course i don't use that for for that purpose at all this is only for insecticides uh organic insect control if you want to say that um, I don't I only use organic stuff just to be clear so I put it in that and I adjust the amount of the concentrate that's going to be sprayed with the water and that just makes it super easy for me I spray the trees that way and I spray the vegetables that way as well so I'm gonna try to have a once or every once or every twice a week regimen where I don't spray as much as I did this first time uh, but it would be just a, at a lower concentrate just to make sure that things are staying healthy because from the potting soil uh, from yeah things from the potting soil we had uh, aphids I think uh, I don't uh, either seed e either from the seed starting uh, soil or the potting soil one of them I 
think it's the seed starting uh, mix and with also the compost that we got it seems like it has a lot of bugs in it that I haven't experienced before so it's just a whole lot of things that we are dealing with this year so I just want to make sure that we are actually going to have a harvest so to have a harvest you have to treat the insects otherwise they're just going to devour your food such as gardening <laughs> that's you know you have you have the birds the mice the deer the insects the chipmunks the squirrels the rabbits they're all after our vegetables and we have to protect them you know we work so hard to make a vegetable garden and we have to make sure that we get a harvest from it okay first of all I have my gloves they're dirty they need washing but it's better than not having any gloves and I also have pruners and an alcohol spray and the reason why I have an alcohol spray is just in case if the uh, tomatoes have a disease on them I don't want to spread it from one plant to another if one one plant is infected I want to make sure to spray before I move on to the next plant and I want to make sure that I remember that because sometimes I don't and I do the mistake of just moving on without spraying so the alcohol is just a 90 90% I think isopropyl al alcohol and I just spray it on the pruner every time uh, once I'm done with one plant and move on to the next. And this right here is uh, just a uh, twisty tie that's soft on the outside so it doesn't harm the plants and I cut the size that I want uh, that I need to go around the plant so that I can tie it to the stake. I think I am going to need some steaks for today because I have some tomato plants that are still not staked because I ran out of steaks. So I think I have some tea posts lying around uh, in my previous vegetable garden that I can get and use over here as steaks because that's all I have. <laughs> I didn't have the chance to go and get some more steaks so tea posts will work fine for that. So I'm going to work from that side over there and then come along this side over here and then work on the opposite side. And I'll show you for the first few ones because um, those ones are pretty bad. <laughs> they should have been pruned a long time ago. Oh well. Before I even start I'm going to spray my pruners because I'm pretty sure I used them for something else and I didn't clean them. <laughs> so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to prune the bottom leaves and because I don't want them to be touching the soil. So as the plants grow you can prune more of the bottom leaves. So I just come as close as I can to the uh, stem of, to the main stem of the tomato and I cut the leaf right there. So if you can also see there's a crown right over here before this a tomato leaf stem starts whatever that is called so you don't want to cut the crown because this allows the plant to heal better you want to give it about maybe uh, an eighth of an inch or so uh, distance and then you cut away from the crown and then you make a cut you want to make as clean of a cut as you can and that's just gonna allow the plant to heal easier so I'm going to do the same to this one over here. Basically the same rule of pruning applies to almost all plants when you are pruning close to a stem or a branch. I think this is good for now. Now I'm going to move on to the upper area. It looks like I have two tomato plants that are kind of interlinking over here. So we're gonna raise this uh, that you see this uh, main branch over here it should have been really tied a lot earlier because now it's super thick and I hope that I'm not gonna break it and we're going to tie it to this post over here I'm going to get a piece ready for me so that as I raise it I can tie it so that I don't break the break the branch so I'm gonna tie I'm going to cut maybe about six inches because the stem is a thick and I want to give it some room so that it can expand as well. I'm going to gently lift it if I can. If you 
don't want it to do gymnastics over here. <laughs> This is why pruning them when they are still tender is a lot easier and is the best route to go. But this is sort of an overgrown tomato and this is a great example for you. If you have an overgrown tomato, what you can do. All right, so we tied this part over here. Now I'm going to lift this top, but before I do that, I'm going to cut another one. guys see it? It's now right up to here. So that's the top right now. And this is an indeterminate tomato. And indeterminate tomatoes continue to grow. They can grow up to 20 feet long if they have the space. And if you let them sprawl on the ground, they just keep growing and going and they spread themselves out and they root themselves into the ground along um, some uh, when their stem touches the ground. They don't root themselves everywhere, but they do put out roots in several places when they grow along the ground because tomatoes are actually a vine. So if you have a tomato that's growing on the ground, uh, that's what it would do. So, uh, tomatoes that are growing on the ground, on the surface of the ground, sometimes do rot because they are directly uh, touching the soil and there's moisture, there are uh, soil-borne diseases and such. I did have some tomatoes in prior years just grow on their own and I just kind of let them grow because I had a baby and I, did, I wasn't able to <laughs> do anything about them. And um, they produced some tomatoes, they weren't the best tomatoes and the plant wasn't super healthy but it was growing and it was happy because it was having roots everywhere all along the ground. Again, you do risk disease in that occasion and you do risk your fruits rotting and you do risk critters coming and eating your fruits because they're just right on the surface of the ground so chipmunks are super happy about that they love that and the mice and everything else all right so that's for the main stem now so you can see this is the main stem it's growing up long now we're going to talk about suckers sorry guys the sun is going to keep coming and going that's how it's going to be today but i hope you can see what we have over here so this right here if you can see on this side there's this is a leaf right here um or uh stem with leaves <laughs> i'm not sure what is the proper term for this but right between the main stem and the leaf you are going to have a stem growing out of there and no, those are known suckers and um, I believe the reason why they are called suckers is because they actually take um, nutrients out of the main plant and take it into these suckers. These suckers can produce fruits. Some people choose to prune them, some people choose to not prune them. I personally choose to prune them if I can and if I do have the, the time for it. Uh, because I believe that the plant is um, healthier for it first because it has a lot more airflow and uh, also and the plant will produce bigger fruit for you and healthier fruits because the suckers because they do take more energy out of the plant they and they are producing more fruit so the more fruit you have the smaller the fruit uh, your fruit is going to be and that is the case for all plants and uh, like fruit trees for example if you have tons of fruits on the tree uh, the, fruit, the tree now is working to grow all these fruits for you so you might have a lot more fruit but you are going to have smaller fruits so that's the same case with tomatoes to make your fruits bigger 
you are going to need to prune those parts that are going to take more energy out of the plant and produce more fruits. So yes, you are taking fruits away, but you are going to end up with bigger fruits. And in my opinion, that's going to give you a lot healthier uh, fruits and plant. And so for just for, we, we are going to do the same thing that we did uh, for the leaf. We are going to get as close as we can to that uh, crown and we are going to cut the sucker right at the crown. So now I'm going to look for suckers all over this plant and I see one that is gigantic. Let me show you. <laughs> so you guys see this one? This is a sucker also. You can see it's this is the leaf right here. Can you see it? And that's the sucker. So when you have a leaf and you see something growing out of there, usually that's a sucker and not the main stem. You can actually take this if you want and put it in some water, it will root out and you can plant it or you can plant it directly in the ground. Just make sure to keep it watered and if you live in a hot location make sure to give it some shade because it's going to wilt and um, it might die. I have planted some suckers directly in the ground in previous years and some of them made it, some of them did not. It depends I think on how thick their stem is and how well they can hold on to uh, the moisture, how hardy they are and how easily they can root in. Now some of them you can see uh, they have some areas that they're like almost ready to put some roots. The tomato plants have hairs all along their stems and some of those hairs actually do put out roots. If you want to learn more about tomatoes, I have a full blog post. Uh, I have a full blog post on tomatoes, so I will be leaving it in the description box below, and I talk more about this. So right now, again, I'm going to be pruning this sucker. Now this already has some blossoms on it, so I'm just going to prune it. Again, same thing as we did before, and there we go. It's like a tomato tree. I have a sucker right here. Some of them you could just, if they are small, you could easily pinch with your fingers like that. And that's the stage where I prefer to do them at, or even smaller. Sometimes if you can see them when they're tiny, just barely sticking out, just you can take your finger and just push that out and it's super easy. It just drops down and no big mess and no big fuss. <laughs> so that's one over here. I'm going to have to go over the plants again after I'm done. Now when you reach the top, a lot of people have a hard time identifying which is the main leader and which is a sucker. So let's talk a little bit about that. So let me bring it closer to you guys. So here we are. Here's the tip of the plant. And a lot of people get the main leader confused with a sucker. Now for this stage right here, I would rather you not do anything. This is what I do. Um, and I just leave this right here alone. But right under it, I can see there's a leaf node right here. It's sticking out. And you see this little shoot coming out of it. That is a sucker. Here's the main stem. And here's the sucker. And I know that because there's a leaf node sticking out. And the sucker usually sticks out at an angular position not a vertical position so there there we go but for this it's really difficult to tell which is the sucker and which is the main branch right now i believe this is the sucker because you can see there's a there's a leaf node right here right there and there's a sucker and there's the main branch right here the main the stem leader right there okay but for the sake of this demonstration I'm gonna leave leave this and I'm gonna let it grow and then as it grows I'll come back and I'll check on it and I'll prune the suckers off and I'll just keep letting it grow this stake right here is I think 10 feet high um, and the plant can go a lot grow a lot bigger than this but uh, 
maybe once it reaches the top I might top it off or I might just let it dangle on the side we'll see what happens <laughs> so now I'm going to do the same for the tomato plants that are right next to it and then I'm going to come back to each plant and prune that prune them a little bit heavier because I want to make sure that the bottom leaves are well pruned and I don't want anything touching the soil because I don't want to um, have any diseases um, on the plant just in case if there are any diseases in the soil because I don't want the plant to have any diseases like I said I'm not sure if these plants are diseased I don't believe so because I don't see sign of that, signs of that but I'll be cautious and I'm going to spray my pruners with some alcohol now from my experience with tomato plants my parents had uh, greenhouses for several years and they grew tomato plants um, and with the leaf curl they usually have like a they have a really deformed leaf not just curled and it also uh, sometimes has like a yellow spot in the middle or on the side or somewhere and some orange and it looks like really deformed it's not just a curl and I don't see this sign over here I've never exper experienced tomato leaf curl in my garden but I've seen it at my parents gardens um, and I don't see it over here so I'm not super concerned about that I think these tomatoes are healthy they're just a little stressed from all the weather that we've been having I accidentally pruned off some fruit. Oh well. So here's another great example of something that can be confusing to some people. So you see here, there's a sucker over here but some people might confuse it with a main leader and there's the main leader over here now I know this is a sucker again because I see a leaf node right here and the main leader is shooting up and it's a lot stronger and it's continuing to put on some more growth and there are fruits on it already so I'm going to cut this off again the sucker is growing at the same angle of the, of the leaf over here. Oh, this is making the, making it difficult for me to cut it. I can actually snap this with my fingers. No, I'll just come on. There we go. All right. So that's the main leader, and I could tie it right now, but I think I'm just gonna 
let it grow a little bit before I tie it because I don't want to risk breaking it. So we talked about indeterminate tomatoes. Now we are going to talk a little bit about determinate tomatoes. Determinate tomatoes are a bush type variety of tomatoes and they grow about three to four feet tall and wide. And normally you don't want to prune indeterminate tomatoes because that's the size that, are, that they are going to be and the fruit that they are going to set, that's the amount of fruit that they are going to set and no more. And they ripen their fruits at the same time. While the difference is with an indeterminate tomato is that they continue to produce fruits throughout the season and their fruits continuously ripen throughout the season. So I like that about indeterminate tomatoes, but I also like some of the varieties that determinate tomatoes have. Um, and those are usually large tomatoes and they are great for many applications and right here it turns out that I have an indeterminate tomatoes now when I planted these I had them all labeled and everything and then I mixed them all up and some were labeled and some were not and just the whole trying to get everything ready for spring and managing a household and a toddler and homeschooling and all that so things kind of got lost um, so I ended up here um, with a with an indeterminate tomato when I planted so let me show you I don't know if you guys can see it the Sun is like right in my face so here it is right here so when I planted them um, when I first planted them over here I planted them all the same way I removed the bottom leaves and if they had any suckers I pruned the suckers off and this was treated the same way as I treated all the other tomatoes I'm not sure which variety this is but I'm assuming it's a Cherokee tomato I could be wrong um, I'm not sure if Cherokee tomato is determinant or indeterminate I also forgot what each tomato was like I have so many varieties in here I kind of lost track of what is uh, what each tomato plant whether it's de determinant or indeterminate or what is what is its fruit like I have on this side here orange icicle I kind of know what that is like so there are some varieties I remember and most of them I don't I don't remember what they're like anyway so this is an indeterminate tomato and it has suckers and it's pushing out you can see so what am I gonna do about it nothing the only thing that I'm going to do is just prune off the bottom leaves because I don't want the leaves to touch the soil because again if they do touch the soil then you are risking disease I'm going to spray my pruners bottom leaves off. That's it. And indeterminate tomatoes are great for, um, I think they would be a great application for canning because they all ripen at the same time. So if you pick a variety that is good for canning, um, which is usually more flesh and less uh, less liquid in the tomato uh, those uh, would be great for canning because they would all ripen at the same time and if you want to do your, your canning all at the same time that would be perfect for you me personally with having kids and all that I want to do my canning in um, just a few at a time because I can't sit there for hours in the kitchen doing canning and you know taking care of my children and with a toddler that screams a nightmare to me <laughs> i don't know about you but i'm i can't do that <laughs> all right so i'm going to finish up with all these tomatoes and then i'll get back to you you can see how easily i get distracted i started weeding already instead of pruning my tomatoes oh Look at this cutest little indeterminate tomato with speaking of distraction. So this is, if you guys can see it, this is a Tom Thumb tomato. This one over here isn't doing the best, maybe because it's not getting enough sunlight, but I think that once I prune all the leaves and, uh, of the tomatoes and stake them up, it will do better. Let me show you a better one. So here we go. I hope you guys can see it better. So it has the cutest little fruit, it's tiny. Now I'm going to be coming back and fertilizing these after I prune them. 
I'm going to fertilize this bed again because I see that it needs it. And this is fresh soil. This is not from our soil. Normally I uh, put compost directly in the bed from our kitchen and I let it compost in the bed and that just adds a lot of organic material. And uh, the worms eat all that stuff and they put worm castings in the ground so it's just great. But this is fresh over here, fresh soil, so things, you know, they're doing okay, but they need a little help. <laughs> I have a big mess over here. Let me show you uh, because I think this will help. So let's look at this plant over here. I have this really big branch over here, this really big branch over here, and this really big branch over here. Uh -huh. Why do these bugs always land in my face and in my eyes? Oh, and another big branch on this side also. So, who's the main leader over here? Um, again, first thing I said is you look for a leaf node. So you see here, I have a leaf node right here, and I have this sucker coming out of it right here, and there's another sucker even coming out of it. And then right here on this side, same thing. I have a leaf node right here, right, a, right underneath this branch, and then I have this sucker coming out of it. And on this side, I know this is the main branch because I don't see any leaf node that this is growing from. It's just growing on its own. So you can see right here, there's no leaf node or anything. It's just on its own. And it's also the strongest of them all. It's the thickest and um, it's putting out more suckers everywhere. So. I know this is for sure the main leader because it's not growing out of a out of a leaf node and it is the healthiest out of them all and it's putting out a lot more suckers and it's also already putting out fruit you can see right here so let me give you a little close-up so that you can you guys can see so you see right here this one is not connected to anything it's just coming off on its own it's not coming off of a leaf node. And this one right here, this one is connected to this leaf node right here. There's another sucker coming out and it's heading an, at an angle that's similar to that of the leaf. Now the leaf is going to head down and this is going to head a little bit over it and, and create kind of like a maybe 45 degree angle or so but they are heading in the same direction while the main branch heads in a in an opposite direction almost at a 90 degree angle from the leaf over here you could see or i should say 180 degree angle from from the leaf so that's the leaf node right here and that's the main branch right there and again same thing for this leaf so you have this is the leaf node right here and that branch and it's heading in the same direction as the leaf node is heading to uh, heading um heading over to. So the leaf node is heading that way and this sucker is heading in the same direction. Again, they're going to be at an angle, it's maybe like 30 to 45 degree angle, something like that. But that's how you can tell when you have a really big tomato that you kind of let overgrow, overgrow and you want to prune it and single stem it, this is how you can tell. So I'm going to prune off these suckers even though it seems like a painful thing to do, but this will be better for the plant. And again, you can take these and plant them if they are healthy. Just bury them deep into the ground, uh, remove the leaves first, the bottom leaves, and you should be good to go. And here's another sucker that's growing, and this is still tender, so I could just easily snap it. Okay, so there's the main leader. Oh, there's another sucker right here. There we go. Okay, so now I'm gonna tie it up a little.
So I wanted to talk a little bit about the blossom. You can see that when a blossom comes out, it comes from the main stem and you can easily tell that these are going to be tomatoes. It doesn't have any leaves on it and it's not confusing. However, I have seen that in previous years, some of my blossom ends at the tip of them, as the tomatoes mature, they start putting out leaves and suckers. And that happens with indeterminate tomatoes. They don't all do that, but a lot of them do that. You can see over here, this one is a bigger one and it's starting to put out some fruits and how it looks like. When I come over here, uh, I was doing some pruning on this. This is a, I believe, is a blossom. However, it was putting out over here on this side some suckers and some leaves and they sometimes, again, blossoms sometimes do that. This, the, they just branch out and try to create a new tomato branch or new tomato plant, if you want to say. Um, so, but sometimes also suckers, suckers can look that way too. I believe this one over here is a sucker because it's right over this branch. And I could be wrong. But this is, it did the exact same thing and you can see there's a leaf over here and it had some suckers and some branching going out over here. So, and over here as well. So I just cut those off. I left this leaf just to allow it to absorb some energy from the sun so that it can photosynthesize. But that's sometimes a phenomena that you would see and it can happen. You can see over here the small blossoms. You can tell, you can just easily tell that's a blossom and that's not a sucker. Let me show you a small sucker. See, again, that's a blossom. Let's see if I can find a small, 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 small sucker. Here we go. That's a small sucker right here. So you can see there are no flowers, no blossoms, nothing, just leaves and a stem. Just like that. You see? So that's how you can tell the difference. And again, a blossom would stick out along the main stem away from a leaf node, usually. It could be right over here, but it's not going to be right where the leaf node comes out. I finished uh, this row over here on this side and I'm not going to be able to stake the rest of the tomatoes. I also ran out of the twisty ties that I was using to tie the tomatoes to the stakes. Some stakes don't require um, any twisty ties, they're kind of like swirly and you just kind of weave the tomato in, in 
and I'm, those are not my favorite because one, you can break the tomato plant and two, they're not tall enough. Um, but they're okay, they do the job for what I need them to do for now. In the future, I want to get more of these tall ones over here because these are great. Um, so I'm gonna try to finish the next row yeah. on the other side yeah. if she lets me. <laughs> you like it? <laughs> She's trying some basil and uh, yeah. Um, but I'm gonna be doing that off video. So I hope this video was helpful to you guys and again I'll be leaving a link for the uh, tomato blog post down in the description box below as long uh, along with the first tomato video that I did on planting tomatoes and caring for them and so you can go ahead and check that out I'll leave a link for that video also over here so you guys can go ahead and check it out and I want to thank you so much for watching for being here and thank you all for commenting for your kind comments this encourages me and keeps me going so thank you so much and I'll see you again in the next episode bye I'm gonna say bye I love you